What's up guys, this is second video in our little production about the cars um, in Need for Speed and the history about the, these wonderful cars. The car today is the Ford um, Lotus, the MK1 Lotus. Okay, it was manufactured between 1963 and 1966, so successor to this vehicle was a Lotus Colton. Um, it was a performance car, body style, two-door saloon, and it came out finally with a 1600cc straightforward twin overhead camshaft motor. Brief history about the vehicle, the history of the Lotus Cortina began in 1961. Colin Chapman had been wishing to build his own engines for Lotus, mainly because the Coventry Climax units were so expensive. Colin's campaign chance came when he was commissioned by Harry Monday, a close friend and designer of the Coventry Climax engine and technical editor for Autocorp, to design twin cam version of the Ford Kent engine. Most of the development of the engine was done on a 9900cc and a 1300cc bottom end, but in 1962 Ford released the, six, um, the 116E 5 bearing 1400 um, engine or 1499 engine and work centered on this. Keith Duckworth from Cosworth played an important part in tuning of the engine. The engine's first appearance was in 1962 at the Nuremberg in a Lotus 23 driven by Jim Clark. Almost as soon as the engine appeared in the production car Lotus Elan, it was recalled and replaced with a larger capacity unit, 82.5mm board to give it 1600cc. This was in order to get the car closer to the 1600 litre capacity class in that motorsport. While engines were being developed, Walter Hayes Ford asked Colin Chapman if he would fit this engine to a thousand Ford saloons for Group 2 homologation. Chapman quickly accepted, although it must have been very busy in the chestnut plant, with the line about to be launched. The Type 28 or Lotus Cortina, or Cortina Lotus as Ford would like to call it, was duly launched. Ford supplied the two-door Cortina body shell and took care of all the marketing and selling of the car, whilst Lotus did all the mechanical and cosmetic changes. The major changes involved installing 1600cc 105 braking horsepower or 78 kilowatts engine together with the same close ratio gearbox as the Elan. The rear suspension was drastically altered and lightweight alloy web panels were, fit, were used for doors, bonnet and a boot. Lightweight casings were fitted um, to the gearbox and differential. All the Lotus factory cars were painted white with a green stripe, although Ford built some for racing in red, and one customer had a dark blue strip due to being superstitious about green. The cars also received a front quarter bumper, and round Lotus badges were fitted to the rear wings and to the right side of the radiator panel, front from the driver's position. The interior modifications were limited to a center console designed to accommodate the new gear lever position, um, different seat, and a later style dashboard featuring a technometer, speedometer, oil pressure, water temperature, and a fuel um, level gauges. A wood rim steering wheel was fitted. The suspension changes to the car were quite extensive. The car received shorter struts up front, forged track control arms, and a 5.5J by 13 steel wheel rims. The rear was even more radical with vertical coil springs, dampers replacing the leaf springs and um, two trailing arms with a bracket which connected to the differential housing and the brackets near the um, trailing arm pivots sorted out the axle location. To support the setup, further braces were put between the rear seats and, fr and from the rear wheel arch down to the chassis in the boot. The stiffening braces meant that the spare wheel had to be moved from the standard Cortina's wheel well and was bolted to the left side of the boot floor. The battery was also relocated to the boot behind the right wheel arch. Both of these changes made big improvements to the overall weight distribution. Another improvement the Lotus Cortina gained was the new braking system 9.5 or 240mm front discs, which were built by the brake specialist Girling. This system also was fitted to Cortina GTs but without a servo which was fitted in the Lotus Cortina engine bay. Initially the engines were built by G.A. Pretswick and of Tottenham and then Villiers of Wolverhampton. In 1966 Lotus moved to Hathel in Northwich where they had their own engines building facilities. The Lotus Cortina used an 8-inch or 200mm diaphragm spring clutch, whereas Ford fitted coil spring clutches to the rest of the range. The remainder of the gearbox was identical to the Lotus Elan, 
This led to a few problems because although the ultra close gear ratios were perfect for the racetrack and open road, the clutch was given a hard time in traffic and ratios were later changed. The early cars were very popular and earned some rare reviews. One magazine described the car as a tin top version of a Lotus. It was the car of many enthusiasts who before had a settle for Cortina GT or a Mini Cooper. And it also amazed a lot of peop a pub the, the public who were used to overweight sports cars like the Austin Healey 3000. The launch was not perfect, however, the car was too special. The car was too specialist for some Ford dealerships who did not understand the car. There are a few stories of incorrect parts being fitted at services. There were a few teething problems reported at the first batch of, of owners. Most of the problems show how quick the car was developed. Some of the engineers were down on power, the gear ratios were too close and the worst problem was the differential housing coming away from the casting casing. This problem was mainly caused by the high loads put on the axle because of the A bracket. It was an integral part of the rear suspension. This was made even worse by the fact um, any oil lost from the axle worked its way onto the bushes of the A bracket. There were four main updates made by the MK1 Lotus during its production to solve some of these problems. The first change was a swap of the two-piece prop shaft and the lighter alloy transmission casings were changed with standard Ford items. This also included swapping the ultra-close ratio gears from the Cortina GT gear ratios. The main difference was first and second and reverse were much higher ratios from the 1964 standard panels were used and rather than the light alloy ones alloy items and ultra close ratio cl um, cooled be specified when buying the car the second main change came in late 1964 when the entire ford container range had a facelift which included a full width front grille and aerofoil flow outlets in the rear quarter because the Cortinas also gained Ford's new ventilation system which also included an update in the interior. The third and probably the most important change came in the mid-1965 when the Lotus rear suspension was changed from for the leaf spring and radius arms of the Cortina GT. This replaced all the stiffening tubing as well. The last update also came in 1965 when the rear drums were swapped for self-adjusting um, items and also the famous 2000 E gearbox ratios were used. These lowered first and reverse about halfway between the Cortina GT ratio and the ultra close ratio box. Also these changes made the cars less specialistic and specialized but far more reliable and all the special parts were still available for competition as well as to members of the public. The Lotus Cortina had by this time earned an awesome competition reputation. It was also being made in the left hand drive when production finished around late 1966 and the MK2 took over.